Hey guys, it's Half Angel. Welcome back to the channel. And today we're going on a right trip here today in Peru. Now, I do like it spicy. And this is going to be an interesting challenge. We're flying in tropical storm conditions, which are a little dramatic for where we are. But as you can see, it's pretty hard to see anything. Uh, we're taking off from Palmas del Espino Airport here in, in Uchiza, Peru. This is Sierra Papa Papa November. Winds currently are 54 knots at 121, which means we're going to have an epic tailwind getting to where we're going, which is Chugal Airport up in the mountains of Peru. 4,000 feet up, and it's down a narrow canyon. It's a fun one. We've been there during one review, but never actually properly so. I think today is, dear God, look at these conditions. This is nasty. This is not a flying weather. Well, we're going to do the best we can here and see exactly what we can manage. Because, uh, I guess we got to go. Right? We roughly know what we need to do. We've got some mountains to deal with. It's an 80 nautical mile journey, but winds will be to our tail. That should help us. I hope. Okay. Let's get you set to terrain. Because I'm going to need that. Oh, yeah. I need a bit of lighting in here today. Uh, where did I put my lighting switches? Let's make sure the correct lighting here is on. Okay, this is our lighting. So I want a bit of... That's the orange instrument. That's the switch panel. We don't need that, per se. Okay. Uh, looks like we've got a passenger riding along with us today. Where is that click spot? Where are you? I know it's around here somewhere. I just keep trying to find all the various uh, <laughs> little Easter eggs they put into this aircraft. I can never always find them. Oh, I had it a second ago. There we go. A little Einstein on the dash. Okay, so loading wise, we're going to be taking four people on this journey, which is going to make things a little bit interesting in terms of our passenger load. They all look very happy to be here. But let's take a full six, shall we? It could could be worse. Weather's easing up, though, which is great. So we've got a full load of people. Oh, boy. This one's going to be fun. <laughs> the, the storm clearing is, is really good news, actually. I love how my props are turning, by the way, from the wind. Yeah, the windmilling in the wind outside, which is roaring away at us. Okay. Let's get ourselves set up to go here. So, magnetos are on. I do not use the boost pumps at this stage of flight operations. Let's get everything set here as it needs to be. Okay. You hear that wind whistling outside? Oh, man. This is going to be interesting. Okay. Clear prop. Did I turn my fuel on? I don't think I did. Let's make sure that's set properly. I'm never quite sure. Where's fuel pressure? Okay. It's actually... Do I remember to put these on for start? No, I leave them off. I'm pretty sure. Give it a bit of a prime. It's been a minute since I've flown the Milviz. I'm going to cook that starter if I'm not much more careful. Uh, there is always something I've not done. I'm never quite sure what it is. There's my cow flaps. That's good. There's no actual cutoff switch for the fuel. What are you two set to? It's always so bloody hard to see. There we go. Those should be on the right fuel tanks, so we should be good. Let's give this a bit of a primey prime. Right wants to catch, okay. Now they want to catch. Perfect. So skies are clearing, it's a miracle. We actually might have some visibility here for our departure. And uh, it's not a big airport, as you can tell. So let's get my head on here. And we're going to get ourselves ready for a rocking takeoff. 
Because this one's going to be a uh, little spicy. Okay. Let's give it a notch of flaps here. Taxi down to the end runway, turn around, and we are going to depart. Now, we're going to have a bit of crosswind, and it's going to be about 15, 20 knots of crosswind component, even from this, so we need to be a little bit careful on this departure. The plane could really get upset very easily with us. So, four takeoff checks. Flaps are set for takeoff. Gear is down and locked. I have mixture set for altitude. Instruments are moving. Weather horrific. Controls are free and clear. No obstructions. Everything feels good there. Okay. Uh, oh, hello. Did I turn on? I did. We're good. Oh, man. This is nasty. Let's do this. Let's hope this is better than taking off in the Beach 18. Oh, the weather's coming really hard. So crossing the controls here just to keep myself straight. As we fly into complete and utter greyness. Speed is alive. And we're coming up. The trees are huge here. Yes, I'm aware. Oh, I'm so aware. Ooh. Oh man, this is nasty. My start is not engaged. Right, we're in IFR conditions here, so we're going to turn on course. Airspeed is coming down. I can see nothing here. And I'm rolling to the left, but my wings are to the right. Oh my god. And I'm nose up now. There we go. Let's bring that down. Let's turn this way. Let's see if we get a better result. This is extreme. Oh. You're hearing a surging? trying to get turned on courses so I can level out and I have no visual references I'm doing this entirely wow the engines hate this my pitch is oh god death may be imminent oh is that a tree that's a tree no I am in so much danger. I'm flying up super hard right now. I don't know where I am. I have no idea where I am. We're inverted, I know that much. Come on, fight! You suck at fight! Oh god, that's a tree, I'm dead. Ah. Uh. That was the scariest thing I have ever done. Ah. Uh, I think we should turn the weather down a notch. Because tropical storm means death. Okay, so we're back here at uh, Palma uh, del Espino. And we're taking off. It's slightly less toxic weather conditions because apparently tropical storm conditions turned me into a blender. So let's go. It was a bit much for what we were going to deal with. The winds are about half what they were now. We're looking 25 to 30 knots gusting uh, from the same direction. And it's building storms rather than... Uh, I have a tropical storm. So I should be less dead this time. It's still pretty gusty. Yes, 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 yes. But it's nowhere near quite as murdery anymore. 
Yeah, I was so dead. There was nothing I could do. Those were not flying conditions. Even if it was IFR, the plane would not stay straight. I was you know, being thrown every direction I could imagine. The winds turned me upside down, tossed me around, and I had no idea what I was doing. And it's not a ton better right now, but we have visibility at least for when we die, so we'll see it coming. I love it. It's great. Alright. So I'll set our power where we want it. And let's get ourselves set up here. As we turn on course. Looking mildly better, I think. In fact, this might be one of the rare occasions where I do use the autopilot. Because we still have about 80 nautical miles to go, just under that. But it's still pretty spicy. Now, to ensure everything is configured for our current phase of flight, we are good. So I'm going to go ahead and set up our little friend here. So what mode am I in here? I'm in VLOC. GPS mode. I'm going to set us for six. Okay, this should turn us back of course because we are drifting off to the right quite significantly. And our altitude is currently set, so I'm going to give us a bit of... Ooh, hello. Nose up. And arm us for 6,000 feet. Climb at 600 feet a minute. We should be good. Now, we're already passing through 4,000, so I'm going to keep an eye on my leaning fuel mixture so far. Which we're doing okay with. For the time being. Where's my EGT in this beast? Okay, it shows the upper levels, so we are good on that. That's looking good, just a lean of peak. And we have some pretty high terrain coming up ahead of us. Still in climb power here. Keep it top of the green. I'm going to want to do a bit more than what we're doing right now to clear these mountains. But it's brisk. It is so brisk out there today. I think we're going to want more than 6,000. What's beeping at me? That's terrifying. And what here is clicky clacking? Those are off. Those look off. It's almost like my start is engaged on. I can never work out what the clicking is. Gear is marked up. It says something's constantly trying to turn. I don't know what it is. That was good. Click all the buttons till something stops making a noise. No, they're up and good. Well, maybe we're never going to find out. Oh, hi. I have a button conflict somewhere. Gotcha. Taxi lights. That's what's conflicting. Oh, that felt like it came through my cockpit. We're going to want to pick this climb up a little bit here. We have got terrain ahead of us we want to be dealing with. Not quite now. What's my VS going to be looking? Okay, we're zeroed out for some reason. Oh, we're at 6,000. Okay. Let's take us up to 9,500. Which is going to give us a reasonable climb here, but this is looking pretty close ahead of us. So we're going to have to maybe take manual control here if the autopilot doesn't want to behave. And I'm going to take it off course as we pass over the river valley down below. 
and we are getting closer to this weather, so that's something to be aware of. This is definitely a flight where I need to do a little bit less hand flying right now and more management to my location, terrain and uh, conditions. Because sometimes it's a bit much for one person to do alone. Useful when you've got two people in the cockpit, but trickier when you're on your own and you're having to worry about things like the weather, the terrain. And we're looking okay. Keep that mixture leaning out. Coming through six and a half thousand. Okay. Yeah, this is manual control time, I think. Let's pick the nose up slightly here. Apply a little more power to keep us in climb. We should cover this no problem. Coming a bit close to blue arc here. Should clear the ridge, but I want to be a little bit higher in case we catch a downdraft on the far side. Be prepared for it anyway, but with the winds to our tail, anything we're going over is going to expect a downdraft. So we need to be a little bit more aware of that. Coming up towards 8,000, and that should settle us good with what we're looking at ahead of us. Shouldn't be a ton of problems at all, but. Our ground speed is really low. Not only are we climbing, but we're dealing with the winds around here being strange. It should be faster, but I'm not seeing that right now. But we are seeing a slight increase. So we're looking at about 20 knots on the tail based on current indicated and ground speed. Now the airport we're heading into, uh, Chagual, I can never pronounce it properly, is nestled in a tight canyon. Now, when I reviewed the Embryo 110 Bandatieri, I flew it into there and out of there, and it was a fun little airport. And I thought, you know what, this Milvis 310, it really lands in a very unique way, like the real 310. And this could be a real fun challenge here. Um, it should be relatively simple. We're looking at about 4,000 feet of runway at about 4,000 feet elevation. So relatively thin air, making that 4,000 or 3,950 feet runway really kind of short. Winds should be calm in the bottom of the valley, but uh, it will definitely make it a challenge, that's for certain. So we're looking good right now, coming up towards 9,000 feet and about 500. Our mixture's feeling good right now. RPM is 22.5, which is where we want it. Manifold is right now pegged at 22.5, so. We're not a turbocharged aircraft, so we're losing manifold pressure. So we don't really want to be doing it here too long. We've kept more than I thought, so I think it might be turbocharged. I'm not sure. This is something I'll have to look up in a moment when we get stabilized, but I'm off course too. That's something I need to be aware of as well. So I mean, manual flying and managing the cold navigation and keeping a check on engine performance in a high altitude climb can make things a bit more task intensive. We are still being buffeted around a fair bit up here, so it's worth being aware. There aren't exactly many landing spots if I need to glide up here. Oh, we forgot the passengers this time. Well, they're there in spirit. In fact, let's, uh, let's fix that. As we suddenly add a lot more weight. You guys okay about that? Sorry, I forgot you all. I, yeah. I was so busy to get back in the air after that, uh, horrific storm we first started in that I wasn't really paying attention. So we're just past nine and a half thousand and we're looking like we're on course here. So I'm going to re-engage our autopilot. Auto, take the wheel. Oh, there we go. Okay, that should be good for us. And nav, engage. Please don't turn me into... No return to roll control here until it decides it doesn't want to fly me into a mountainside because it wants to return the quickest direction to the actual flight track rather than the necessary one this should do for now we will return to the course so can you hear that wind buffeting around the outside of the aircraft oh that's why I left that wide open oh that's a lot quieter isn't it 
Silly me leaving the window open. The door's closed, isn't it? Yes, it is. Fantastic. Okay, so it's still trying to drop me down to... 9,600. That's... Oh. Okay. Let's take me up to... Let's call it 10,000 even. That should be nice. No, God. Stupid click spots. In, stupid flight simulator. And it's click spots. There we go. That's a lot more climb than we wanted. But now we should be allowed to hit nav. And return to course. Which took us to the right here. So... <sighs> we should be a lot safer. Now, EGT is still looking good. Nope, that's dropped the bucket out. That's dropped the bucket out. The window of leaning and where you want to be on the mixture is really narrow the higher up you get. So, firewall is... Well, throttle is firewalled here. And we're still bagging about 20 inches, just about 21 inches here. We'll pick up some speed as we get on course and we're leveled out now. As we're passing through 10,000 feet, that is kind of no. Altitude hold. Yeah. Let's call it 10,500 feet. And as you can tell, the terrain's still pretty close to us. So, yeah. It makes things a little spicy. Now we're starting to pick up some speed. And we should see what we're actually capable of doing up here. At altitude. So, of course, I'm just going to turn my head off while I do this real quick. So I'm not looking around. Lost my cell phone. So we are in the 310R. So, if I were to look this up right now, because I already had the information to hand, obviously. Not the 320, stupid keyboard on iPhone. The 310R. So the 310 is, if I look at the variants, Where is she? 310R, the last production model, introduced 1975 with 285 horsepower engines, which is the IO 520Ms. Three blade props are standard, length of nose for baggage, of course, uh, five and a half thousand pound max takeoff weight. Uh, no, it's not. There's a T310R, which is the turbocharged TSIO 520B, or the TSIO 520BB which is a much better aircraft for this sort of altitude. So we're running naturally aspirated as I thought we were. Something I wasn't quite sure about, but wanted to verify. So we're picking up our speed here and looking at this indicated ground speed, we're looking at 160 knots, 49 nautical miles, which shouldn't take us too long to get there actually at this rate. Doesn't give me an ETE. But judging by our speed, which is still climbing through 160, we'll be looking at about 20 minutes, 25 minutes or so. So we should be good. Hope you've got a nice drink and you're ready for a nice, relaxing flight as we head through the Peruvian mountains here. And I'll put my head back on. Which sounds like a really weird statement to say, but it is breathtaking out here. Let's go outside where the scenery is so pretty. Look at this terrain. Unspoiled by human intervention. Just gorgeous. And this is all stock, of course. The airport we took off from was stock. Changual is one of those, uh, should we say, uh, handcrafted ones that's included with the sim. Really recommend going in there if you can. But look at this. River down there with sandbars, which would make for great bush flying. Gorgeous mountains. Great definition. And I, I mean, just imagine... If we had this in FSX, we'd be paying money for this. Like, lots of money for terrain this good. Okay. That looks like pretty hefty terrain over there, so... No, mouse, get off. Let's do a little deviation, shall we? No, stop zooming out. You annoying poop weasel. That, that. Stop deviating off what I'm trying to select so I don't die. Yeah, go that way. This is a manual control moment, isn't it? Where you have to... Oh no, is it going to kill me? No, it's not going to kill me. Fantastic. 
gonna try and kill me, isn't it? Okay, fine. Take a little bit of manual control here. So engines and stuff looking good. Instruments all in the green in terms of our power plants. Now, it obviously, you know, everyone's all catching a bit of a downdraft there. I'm really close to this ridge, which I do not like, but it's a needs must situation of being here and not wanting to be here. Should be able to curve around this. Of course, you have to be a little bit more careful with maneuvers at this altitude because you don't want to be too aggressive because you might be close to the terrain, but you don't have a lot of air under the wings. So angle of attack is much more of a concern here because the air is thinner. So we don't want to get too extreme with things as it looks like this whole ridge line picks up along here. So we'll parallel where we're heading and we'll try and nudge her up a little bit. Now, this is one of those situations which I don't encourage you to do. It doesn't work. Darn it. I thought Control-H would align my heading bug without me having to constantly fiddle with that goddamn click spot. Which is one of the things I really hate about Flight Sim. It's juddering click spots. Okay, autopilot, heading hold, altitude hold. Okay. You'll do. Thank you. We're going to have to poke a little more altitude out of this thing, aren't we, crossing this range? It's not going to make our lives easy. We're under 40 nautical miles, so we're eating up the terrain really quickly here, actually. So our journey time shouldn't be bad, but... Give it a nudge there. And that should help us out. Low fuel. Uh Pretty sure I brought a spare. Am I going to switch to the tip tanks? This is exactly what I needed to deal with right now. No. That's the one. No. Okay, yep. Yeah. Autopilot off, please. I lost engine power briefly due to stupid reverse click spots in aircraft. So we have fuel. So our main tanks are indicating low. We've switched onto our tips, which should still be about 50% full. We are struggling for airspeed here. Which means I may need to get creative. What am I... Oh god, they're not liking this either. Okay, we're deviating. We're going to have to. Which means we have to go around a little bit off course, but it's going to keep us alive, hopefully. And put us in a good position here to make Changual. Now, the funny part is, I don't believe the tip tanks actually need to have a fuel indication level in uh, the 310, so it's going to be, uh, that's going to be fun. Yeah. Let's get the nose down here. Bring her round this valley. Should give us an opportunity. Keep our speed up, which is important. <laughs> We're starting to push the envelope on this thing. Of course, it's got a ce service ceiling higher than this, but uh, we're already in kind of an oxygen necessitating territory. We're right on the edge of it, and. It is most certainly going to make things more challenging because, yes, you can fly at these higher altitudes, but typically not well, especially not in a naturally aspirated engine. You have dramatically reduced power, so your judgment of various distances and certain areas is important. As I said, the air is thinner, so your turns will be bigger. That's something to be really aware of. And that means we're going to have to climb over this ahead. Damn it. Okay, let's set ourselves into a couple of hundred feet climb we should make this with no problems and if we can't we're going to stay on the right hand side here to maximize our chance of turning around if we need to so we'll stay over here to the right we'll give it 400 feet a minute climb 
brings us through 12,000 feet. Okay, we are good. This should plop us back out on course as well. In fact, there's the course, so we are good. I'm hoping this is the highest point of the mountains. I really am. I'd love to start a long, lazy descent. That would be ideal. I have no problem flying in the mountains. It's just in the mountains when I have limited performance, I get very nervous. Okay, we're feeling good here. Our climb rate is steady. Airspeed is a little bit low than I'd like. But again, this is a necessity situation where I don't have a lot of choice. Oh, our climb rate's gone up significantly there. Quarter gust. Let's drop that down. Try and keep what airspeed we have. We're under the blue line, which is not perfect, but... This is a teasing or over the mountain sort of job. So I need to eke everything I can out of this plane. Come on, piggy. Let's go. Under 100 knots is not pleasant. I'm catching some serious gusts here. And buffeting. Power is really reduced. Okay. This is going to be cutting it fine. Really, really fine. Come on, nose up. Let's climb a little bit more. Give Mama 1300. 13,000. 13,000 is all I'm asking for. The decision point is being reached. And I'm committing. But I have an out to the left. I'm hoping this valley ahead of me opens up. I'm teasing this thing now. Okay, I'm going to circle. I don't have it. I do not have it. You hear that store horn? Yeah. Keep it gentle. Keep it constant. This is why I was on the right-hand side of the valley. To give myself maximum turning room. If I was flying in the middle, I'd be in trouble. Yep, that's the store horn again. We had the out, and we're needing it. We're right on the edge of stall here. I can't wait for us to be descending. Oh boy. Okay, we're coming through 13,000. A spiraling turn does cost you time, but it does give you options. And options are really what we need. Okay, we're coming back on course here. Oh, we're starting to. Okay, we're looking good. And we're going to make it across there now. Comfortably. So we'll head this way. Oh, the teasing of that store horn. Yeah, this is not easy terrain. We've got about 30 nautical miles to go, but we should be at the worst of it here. Tell me this is not a more fun experience than riding the autopilot the whole way there, climbing to the known safe altitude and just passing over the top. Because, yeah, we could do that. It wouldn't be anywhere near as fun, would it? Why do I always sweat whenever I'm recording these videos for you guys? Huh. Yeah. Okay, we're we're clear of the dangerous stuff now. I've got blue sky straight off my nose. We've got airspeed. We're climbing. We'll be able to level this thing out in a minute and get some speed. We're maxing out to 18 inches on the uh, manifold. Just shy of 14,000. We are really skinning the teeth on this. But this is the Peruvian mountains and the Andes. Okay, drop the nose down here, get some speed under our wings. 25 coming up-ish on 26,000, 26 nautical miles. So we're eating this time up really quickly, but it's, uh, yeah. 
definitely keeping things lively for us, isn't it? Okay. Yeah, we're pulling back more airspeed now. And the direction ahead looks relatively clean. This is crossing the Andes, by the way. <laughs> uh, Changual is on the eastern side of the Andes, and we started on the western side. No, we start on the eastern side, it's on, and Changual is on the western side, so we are crossing the Andes in a 310 here. By the skin of our teeth. Whew. And I'm pretty sure my fuel tanks were indicating empty from having the nose so high. The pickup points may have been dry. Which is good to note in case we need it. It's very useful to know. Okay, we're tracking back on course here. 14,500, so I am going to tell this. Take the wheel for me. Because I need a break. <laughs> uh, in fact, time is ticking on here. So we're going to get ready for the rest of our cruise done. And we will see you guys all at the top of Descent as we head down into Tranquil. Okay, so we are approximately 12 nautical miles out right now from Tranquil. And uh, we're starting our descent. So I'm starting to throttle back here. We're not far out. We're definitely not going to need to get to those far mountain ranges over there. So we know our airport is at 4,000 feet, so it's time to start making a bit of a descent. As uh, the weather's definitely been interesting up here and the altitude has been even more interesting. So I think I'm done with 15,000 feet, which is about as high as we got, by the way, during cruise there. Uh, it made things El Spicio, or whatever the correct Spanish is for that. But either way, we're getting back into thicker air now, so our airspeed is definitely picked up. What's been enjoyable is we spent most of this flight without within flap extension range, which is always helpful. Not that I would have wanted to do that. That would have been bad. But either way, we should be just about over the top of that, but I wanted to get into some cleaner air and lower down before that happens. So just raise my actual eye point up, which is useful to still have the hat switch map so I can actually adjust the overall vision point. So I can still look at the camera, or look at the microphone, I should say, and actually keep my head in the right place so I can still turn it and move it without having to be talking out the side of my mouth so I could look around here. I could instead look around here and go, ooh, look at all that. It's wonderful. And you can hear me. So we're eight miles out now and it will be down in one of these valleys. In fact, I'm pretty sure it'll be down in this valley. So I'm dropping my power even. Yes, 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 yes. Our speed right now is 170 knots. We are blasting across the ground. A refreshing change from the extremely uh, interesting speeds we had earlier. The one thing I don't like about the sim is the lightning strikes do seem to appear through your cockpit, right across the front of your screen. Pretty sure we don't have lightning in the aircraft. We are not at 3,000 feet. Oh no, we're 13,000 feet in descending. Yeah, our mixture's nothing anywhere near lean. We're off the table right now. So we're going to dump about 8,000 feet of altitude. And the best part is, we are still within flapping gear extension speed, so guess what's coming down? Yeah, that's my landing gear. And I'm pretty sure the airport will be on that river down there. So I'm idling out my throttles here. My gear is down, causing a nice amount of drag. Which means we can really pull the power back here. And drop that nose, which helps us dump a bunch of this altitude. In fact, there is our airport. Right down there. Do you see it? Right there. That is where we're landing. And we're going to get down here. In fact, we're going to be coming up here. So I'll be swinging us across this headland here and dumping a lot of this altitude because we have to get down, down, down into this valley and bring her in. Noisy with that drag from the uh, landing gear. 
Okay, dropping to 10,000 feet now. If we were on oxygen, it's the time to take ourselves off the bottles. Our fuel's still good. Based on my brief and inaccurate calculations. We'll drop over these ridge lines. that where that was. No, it makes you still basically just doing what it can. Now I'm probably going to want to pull these suckers up here and give ourselves a bit more power. We've dumped quite a bit of altitude there. We're dropping to 9,000 here. We'll dump it on the descent here and we'll turn around and we'll make our approach. So we should be good. But we do need to get down in that in a minute so <laughs> we're gonna have to just dump some altitude shortly which we can do relatively easily i'll show you once we get over this ridge line but i do want some room to be able to turn around and get down there so we're currently as we drop towards eight and a half gonna be four and a half thousand feet above the runway so there's plenty of room to kill now i'm putting that gear back down again and i'm going to deploy first stage of flaps here and we're going to pull a combat descent. Drop our nose in here. Totally not recommended flight practice, but we're doing it anyway. Oh, let's pull the nose. Watch our flap speeds. Give it notch two. Create some more drag for us here. If we can get to about the height of this ridge line as we get to the river, we'll have to turn around and drop the rest of it in no problem whatsoever. We should be pretty clear of the wind down here, but I'm going to have to be aware of it as I'm going to be retracting the gear about now. This is where I want to apply some power. I don't want to get that mixture ready. Flaps to one stage. That's my props. Let's get our... Nope, we're still not happy. Okay, we're in the pipe, five by five. Okay, that's the ridge we need to be worrying about over there, I believe. So we need to skirt this right-hand side here. Give us maximum opportunity. So gear will be coming down for good this time. Power on here. Flaps are currently in stage one. We're going to stick with that for the time being. 5,000 feet. I have actually got mixture control, <laughs> giving me some sort of EGT readout. Now we know this thing lands fast and flat, so we're going to have to hope here. As we dart through the canyon. This is a really dangerous approach because you are turning in and kind of hoping once you get to a certain point on the approach. And you do need to be down in this canyon to make the approach, which does make things a little bit more lively than one would normally like. But lively means fun, right? Lively means fun. Lively def- Oh, bloody hell, that was close. Let's keep ourselves above that blue arc, which means a bit more power now to counteract the drag. Get through this mess, and we'll be good. Full power through here. Okay, we're at 15 degrees flaps. That's all I want for this. Okay, we're coming up on the turn. As we get through this, we should see the ridge I need to set up on. I've only made approaches into here twice, so there's a little guesstimation going on. Close to this. We need to be close to this. Not too close. We don't want grass in the, uh, the wheels, but confirm. Three greens. Flaps are 15. 
props are full. Fine. Okay, here we are. This is where we need to be a little bit more careful. This is a one-shotter. I don't really get a second try, so this might be a clunker, but I'm not going to be too mad about it. Okay, we are turning. And we are committing. Oh, mother. Oh, mother. Oh, don't do this to me now. Come on. Okay. That's going to be a bit of an impact. What the hell? Why did I nail that? Why did I nail that? That was horrific. Okay, I landed short of the displaced threshold, but I don't really care. That's mostly in this case displaced because of where the general approach path will be coming in, but let's put some brakes in here. Let's pull that up. Whew! I greased that somehow. I think it was a sheer amount of panic at applying power, because if you do have too much of a rapid descent rate, kicking some power in will typically arrest that descent rate. So, yeah, it's more of a brute force method of landing <laughs> when you've really only got one try, because I wasn't going to power out of this with the train around us here. Well, we are arriving here at Chagual Airport in Peru. We've crossed the Andes from east to west. And I have more sweat than a marathon runner. This flight was actually more challenging, I think, than Sheep Mountain. <laughs> so, that one, as you'll recall, was pretty spicy. This one was um, technically difficult, comparatively. As we get ourselves out of the plane there. And we had a load of six passengers on there, so we were relatively heavy for this journey. Yeah, so well, five passengers. Two in the back, two there. It should really, in this sort of plane, be four people plus two kids, maybe, if they're small. Or you don't like them very much. But yeah, <laughs> so we had more weight than we really should have. And we managed to cross the Andes in a Cessna 310. This Milvis aircraft keeps giving me so many vibes. I love this thing. And this is a challenging, nasty little strip. With one way in, one way out. We landed a little short onto the displaced part of the threshold, uh, but we were coming up to a point where we really were going to crash or land. So I'm going to take the hit off that one for landing a little bit short, but considering how this thing lands very flat and very fast, I think we just about made it. And yeah, this is a stock airport, so I highly recommend you visit it at some point, but I need to lie down after that. That was crazy. Thank you for watching, guys, and I will see you next time. Bye!